Hi, and welcome to the second tutorial on M Turbo Reverb from Melda Production. As you probably know, loosely, the reverberation can be split into two parts, early and late reflections. The late reflections are what we hear as a room's echo. Clap your hands when in a big room or hall. That sound is made of the late reflections. They suggest the size of the room and its coloration. The early reflections are the ones that come into our ears during the first 10 to 70 milliseconds after the clap. They play a big role in identifying a sound's location in the room and speech intelligibility. In nature, both types are organic parts of the same reverberation. In the digital world, however, we can take advantage of generating and processing them separately, and thus we can create limitless types of an artificial reverberation. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about the Early Reflections Generator. If you are in an easy screen, click on the Edit button on the top. It will take you to the Edit mode. I'm going to omit global parameters at the top, as most of them were covered in the first video. Lower, we find four tabs corresponding to the four Early Reflections Generators. If a tab looks faded, like here, then a generator is off. Turn it on by clicking on this image. The generator's pane can be broken down into three parts. The first one is a mode selector. The second part contains all parameters that we can control. Finally, the third one is the reflections editor. I'm going to begin with explaining all of these parts and then I'll show you some practical examples. Let's start from the bottom. Here we can see a graphical presentation of generated reflections. Each of them is presented by a bar with point. The green ones correspond to reflections on the right channel, and the blue bars represent reflections on the left one. The length of a bar defines the level of correspondent reflection. The higher the bar, the higher the level. The middle axis of the plot presents a delay time. To change a reflection's delay time, hover your mouse cursor over the reflection's point. Click on it. The point will get encircled, and you can see a readout presenting the reflection's current delay time and level. Drag it to a new position. Simple. For vertical-only movements, press and hold Shift key, then drag the control point. You can also use Shift key for multiple points selection. For fine adjustments, hold the control key, Command on Mac. Use your mouse wheel and magnifying glass icons for zooming in and out. To zoom in on a specific area, press and hold Alt key, and then drag a rectangle over it. On the left, we find a bipolar axis whose positive and negative values give in-phase and anti-phase reflections accordingly. Now, when we understand the information shown on the Reflections Editor plot, we can move up and talk about the available parameters. The first, Complexity, determines a number of initial reflections in each channel from 1 to 64. The length sets the reflection time limit with the maximum value of one second. The decay knob controls the envelope that is applied to reflection levels. At zero decibels, all reflections have the levels that we can see on the reflections editor plot. At negative values, a falling envelope is applied. That gives a more natural effect, like the one we hear in real life. Positive values give the opposite effect. That is, the reflection levels will gradually increase during the time set by the length parameter. Typically, we use it to create a reverse reverberation. The deform controller shifts the time of reflections towards the beginning, negative, or the end, positive, of the early reflections pattern. The pre-delay parameter sets a lag between the input signal and early reflections. Usually, we use it to keep a dry signal's transients unmodified. The modulation pane contains parameters controlling the modulation of an input signal. If it is off, the generator receives the input signal in its original form. When the modulations is enabled, the input signal gets modulated by a built-in low-frequency oscillator. 
Commonly, it is used for reducing a comb filter effect appearing at summation of an original and its delayed copies. In a real-life situation, a reflection will never be the same as an original signal. Room's size, absorption of used materials and air will do their job. As a result, reflections are going to be limited in a frequency range. High and low-pass filters are meant to emulate that effect. They are also very useful for getting reflections working only in a frequency range we need. For example, at processing a full drum kit, we could cut some bottom end and highs to make the whole sound a bit cleaner. The volume and pan are self-explanatory parameters, I think. The widening employs the MS matrix to control a stereo width of the sound. At far left position, it makes the output mono. Zero gives a normal stereo image. At 200, the signal gets out of phase and can sound unpleasant. The cross slider controls the role of the input channels in forming a stereo image. At 0%, the output on the left channel is defined by the left input signal, and the output of the right channel by the right input. At 100%, both inputs are processed by all generators. And at 200%, we get a reverse situation, where the output on the left channel is defined by the right input, and the output on the right channel is defined by the left input. To the modes. There are seven of them. The direct mode is the most straightforward. It employs simple delay lines without any feedback. This is the best mode to learn and practice the early reflections generator, as it strictly follows all controllers that we have discussed. Plus, the Reflections Editor pane shows all reflections as they are. The diffuser, like all following modes, uses a feedback. Thus, the number of actual reflections is higher than what we see on the Reflections Editor pane. It also has a slow front response. It is suggested to use a small value of the complexity and short length with this mode. The room, reverb 1 and 2 modes employ variations of a basic reverberation algorithm. They don't have a dense reverb sound on their own, as you may expect. However, don't forget we are only discussing the early reflections here, and for this task, these modes can do just fine. Out of all the modes, Canyon gives the longest reverb response. It is here, rather, for a creative purpose. As the name suggests, the ringer gives a characteristic metallic sound. Out of all the modes, this is the worst choice for a good reverb sound. However, you may find some creative use for it. We have learned enough to start making some noise. Let's put our knowledge to practice. How about a simple ambience generator? My plan is to build an effect that will produce a stereo ambience that will disappear during a mono playback. I choose the direct mode. Four delay pairs should do the trick, so I set the complexity to four. I spread them equally on the time axis and put them in the anti-phase to each other. like this. The length and pre-delay are 30 and 15 milliseconds accordingly. Basically, that is all. Let's have a listen.
first thing to notice is the stereo image tends to the left. To fix that, I'm going to adjust the pre-delay and decay parameters. These settings sound good to me. Done. As the next example, I'm going to build a chorus effect. I stay with the direct mode, however, I'm going to use two generators this time, each with a complexity equal to four. As I need a modulation effect for the chorus, I turn the modulation on. For both generators, I set up similar but different settings. Something like this. When I create an effect from scratch, even if I had a plan at the beginning, there is a good chance I will go by trial and error. Personally, I never know how the effect will end up, like now with modulators, but I must start somewhere, so here they are. Now, how should I spread reflections? To be honest, I don't know. So I'm going to use a handy function that I haven't mentioned yet. It is the randomize. Here. Every click on it creates a different set of available reflections. Of course, I'm going to have to have different sets for each generator. Well, the dirty job is done. Now it is time for fine adjustments. I ended up with these settings. You can go even further and use all four generators. See if it works for you. What if I try to create a delay effect? With the pre-delay and length reaching one second, it looks tempting. But I don't want just one more classical delay effect. I'd like to build something weird. So here is what I do. I use three reflections for each channel, three blue, left, and three green, right. I want that effect to have some quality of ping pong. For that, I put the reflections in the right, left, right, left order, like this. Now the weird part. I'd like some echoes to possess a notch filter effect. To get that, I place some reflections very close to each other, like here and there. To make my delay effect work as it should, I must keep the pre-delay value always equal to this length. This is the easy one. I just appoint a multi-parameter for this task. I also need to organize feedback somehow. Having tested all modes, I decided to go with Reverb 2. It gives me that ping pong effect I'm after, plus the decay parameter works like the feedback. Again, I attach the multi-parameter to it. Well, that's all. Let's test it. I also use the high pass filter to add a bit of taste. As for the early reflections example, the easiest way to get some early reflections for your reverb is simply to randomize them. I'm pretty sure you can do it yourself. With my examples, I just wanted to give some idea of what you can use in your own designs. And don't forget, the early reflection generator is followed by the late reflection one, so the sound will become even more interesting. I still have some parameters to explain. 
the right delay sets a time shift between the left and right channels. Sometimes it can help with fixing a stereo image if you came across such an issue. Positive values delay the right channel, and the negative ones, the left channel. The Analyze IR file opens a browser where you can select an impulse response whose early reflections will be analyzed and replicated in the early reflections generator. It can also be a good starting point for your own reverb design. Don't forget to put the decay, deform, and pre-delay at the zero position. The Remove Decay will undo a natural decay taken from the impulse response. The Remove Delay removes a lag at the first reflection. It will be translated into new length and pre-delay values. Clicking on the monophonic button takes only one blue group of the reflections and uses them for both left and right channels. Needless to say, we get a mono sound in this mode. There is a chance that you will get phase issues between wet and dry signals. The invert function may help with that. It inverts a polarity of the wet signal. That is all for now. Next time we will talk about the late reflections generator. Thanks for watching.